in this class we will try to find out uh, frequency response of a common source amplifier which we have already studied and uh, we will see that this frequency response is uh, approximate frequency response is plotted for uh, two range of frequencies one is when frequency is very high that is what we are going to do in the next this class and in the next class we will take a uh, low frequency case because uh, as i pointed out in one of the classes uh, the gain of the common source or any other amplifier changes with frequency because of the presence of capacitors and since the capacitors are located actually two different uh, regions one is inside the mos one is outside the mos so the frequency response in general uh, will vary uh, whether the frequency is high or frequency is low so that is why we study the low frequency response and high frequency response separately so in this uh, lecture we will study the high frequency response and uh, this high frequency response actually is uh, decided by the capacitors inside mos so what we will have to do first is find out what is high frequency model of say n mos the model that we have been using for n mos up till now is valid only for low frequency and of course for the uh, small signal that means small amplitude of the input signal so we want small signal but now high frequency model of n mos so that uh, we can finally find out what will be the high frequency response of the this common source amplifier that we have already studied so for this case uh, how the gain av will change with this frequency when this omega is for omega very very large so actually there is no unique uh, definition of what do we mean by omega very very large there is one parameter associated with uh, mos transistor which actually decides whether you can consider omega very very large or omega small but nevertheless what we will assume that uh, when uh, omega is uh, at least definitely of order of uh, hundreds of megahertz and beyond omega will be considered very high but if you consider uh, 741 op amp then even few megahertz becomes uh, very high so uh, we will just assume that omega is sufficiently high so that uh, we will have to take care of the uh, capacitors which exist inside the mos so first thing is uh, if i want to know gain for this circuit this circuit which we have already studied then i need to know what is the high frequency model of n mos then i can substitute uh, this mos by that high frequency model and then uh, find out the voltage gain and then use the body technique to get the approximate plot of this uh, voltage gain so first let us see that uh, what will be the high frequency model for uh, this nmos so if you see the structure of nmos then it has uh, this structure this is gate this is source and this is drain and here we have uh, this is called bulk or substrate and typically there will be one terminal for bulk also this bulk uh, can be connected to certain voltage 
very often it will be grounded, but it is not mandatory that it should be grounded. So there are certain uh, consequences when it has certain other voltage. So here we have already seen that there will be various types of electric fields here between various nodes. For example, the strongest one will be starting from gate to source, then here and uh, in this direction, very weak electric field. <clears throat> right. So in general, uh, when you have electric field between two nodes, one can define a capacitor between uh, those two nodes. Uh, because capacitor is uh, a device which stores electromagnetic energy, stores electromagnetic energy in form of electric field. So wherever you have uh, electric field starting and originating between two nodes, so you can define uh, uh, capacitance between those two nodes. So this is uh, one set of electric field. Second set that you will encounter here is going to be at the junction, uh, these junctions between uh, N plus and uh, P type. Right. So similarly here also between N plus and uh, P type, you will have electric field. So there will be a set of capacitances defined between uh, uh, these nodes. That means say gate and source, gate and uh, drain, and uh, then source and bulk because source is connected here and this is bulk. So between source and bulk, similarly between uh, uh, this drain and bulk. So if you see the, uh, it's uh, in terms of uh, symbol. So if this is MOS and here we have gate, drain, source and force terminal is bulk. So there will be in general, capacitors uh, between gate and source, which will be called as CGS, and then capacitor between gate and drain, CGD, and then from drain to bulk, CDB, this is bulk node, and from source to bulk C S B. So these four capacitors uh, exist in the high frequency model of NMOS. So now if we draw the high frequency model of uh, NMOS, so it is going to be like this, this dependent current source, this is going to be there. Now between these nodes, there will be various capacitors. So we have one capacitor here, CGS, another capacitor here, CDB. One between source and bulk. And then between drain and bulk. <clears throat> Sorry, this one is uh, GD. So this is for, of course, lambda is equal to zero. So when we don't include channel length modulation, this is the model of uh, NMOS that we are going to use for the high frequency uh, circuit analysis. Right. So we will not focus on uh, much on uh, exact uh, mechanism of development of these capacitors, except uh, this point, which I have uh, pointed out, that if you see electric field between two nodes, then uh, there will be some capacitance associated between those two nodes. Right. 
And that is what actually is done in parallel plate capacitor. That means uh, we have this node and this node, and these two are the nodes are actually connected to conductor. So there will be electric field. And uh, so this uh, setup stores energy in the form of electric field. And that's why we say that it has capacitance. And of course, there will be charges associated uh, uh, whenever we have this kind of uh, static fields. So now we have this second model, or rather the third model, two models that we discussed where uh, for low frequency, uh, without channel length modulation and with channel length modulation. Now uh, for high frequency, this is our uh, first model. Similarly, when you have uh, lambda not equal to zero, then uh, R naught will be there between uh, drain and source. But uh, we will not include this channel length modulation in our uh, analysis of the circuit that we are going to discuss only for the purpose that, uh, that including this will uh, make the circuit a lot more complicated. Pen and paper analysis will be very difficult. So we are now going to use uh, this model to find out uh, what will be the high frequency uh, voltage gain of common source amplifier. CS gain for high frequency. And uh, just to keep the analysis simple, we are going to consider only the core of the common source amplifier, which we discuss for finding out the voltage gain. And we will see that uh, uh, analysis becomes difficult. So it is not possible to include all the uh, biasing registers also. So here, uh, in, in this circuit that we have discussed, actually real life circuit is not going to be like this. Real life circuit will contain a uh, few other registers and external capacitors also. So let us focus only on this uh, uh, core and then try to see that what will be the voltage gain. So we have to now substitute the MOS by high frequency model and then do the KCL and KVL analysis to find out the voltage gain. So First, we will have to do the small, small signal, high frequency model of CS amplifier. So, this is our usual MOS, and here we have rd now we have to include various capacitors c g s c g d c d b and c s b And here, source is also grounded. And input is connected to the gate. Output is from drain. Right. So what here we find is that for this capacitor, and assuming that the bulk is grounded, So when bulk is grounded, this node, which is bulk node is already grounded. And in the common source, we find that source is grounded. If this is without degeneration case. So in this case, we see that this capacitor has both of its node grounded. So this capacitor will not be able to store any charge 
So there will be no electric field, no storage of energy. So this capacitor will play no role. So this capacitor can be simply removed from the model. Right. So we will have only source which is grounded. And uh, this DB capacitor, this will continue to exist. Similarly, the remaining two capacitors, they will also be there in the circuit. So now this is a circuit and for this circuit, we have to find out the VO and then divided by VI to find out voltage gain. So here we can see that this RD, RD and CDV, they are in parallel. So we can combine them and uh, replace them by a uh, single impedance. We can call this as ZL. So where ZL is going to be parallel of RD and CDB. And this will be equal to RD divided by 1 plus J omega CDB RD. So we are going to use this one. So now we will set up a KCL at drain. So here we have uh, one current coming from this ZL and getting divided uh, into two parts. One goes to the dependent current source, other through CGD. And CGD other node is uh, VI. So we first write KCL at drain. So here this IO current is equal to IG plus say ID. So IO is equal to IG plus ID and IO is minus VO divided by ZL. IG is GM VGS and ID is VO minus VI divided by the reactance of this capacitor and that reactance we will designate by X C G D and so what I have done is I have uh, used this symbol for the complete value of this reactance that means uh, this X contains this J also usually J is kept outside but uh, just to keep the symbols or the number of terms simpler, I have done this thing. So keep in mind that X is always uh, imaginary. J is contained inside this uh, X. So this is uh, the KCL at uh, D and here VGS is equal to V in. Right. So the above equation can now be written in this form. VO minus VO into 1 by ZL plus when we take the VO from that side to the left side, we get X CGD is equal to GMVI. minus V divided by X C G D. Right. So <clears throat> from here one can find out V O by V I and this will turn out to be ZL into G M X C G D minus one divided by ZL plus X C G D. 
So now we will substitute uh, this JDL by the expression that uh, we pointed out some time back. So when we substitute uh, JDL, we get RD into GM XCGD minus one divided by one plus G omega C DB RD and JDL is here in the denominator as well. So this also needs to be substituted. 1 plus G omega C D B R D plus X C G D. So here you can see that even for such a simple circuit, the expression is turning out to be quite complicated. So now substitute x c g d by 1 by g omega c g d so when you make this substitution and do the manipulation what you will get is v o by v i is equal to minus r d g m minus 1 uh, minus j omega c g d divided by 1 plus g omega c g d plus c d b into r d right. so here we find that uh, we have this gain as function of omega So this is TV G omega. Right, so we want an approximate plot of this transfer function, which is the voltage gain. And uh, for that, uh, we you can see that we are luckily already in step two of the body uh, technique. In fact, step three, that means S has already been uh, substituted in the form of j omega right and uh, luckily both the numerator and denominator they are of first order in j omega so no need of uh, factorization but of course we need to write this thing in standard form to identify the pole and zero so we will write this in standard form for So after that, we get GM RD into 1 minus J omega by GM CGD. This is the numerator and uh, the denominator is 1 plus J omega divided by 1 by RD. C G D plus C D B. Yeah. So here uh, we can see that uh, this is zero and this is pole of the gain transfer function. And in this case we have a constant minus G M R D. And we are familiar with uh, this factor. This used to be the voltage gain of common source amplifier at uh, low frequency when we did not include any capacitors. So here, what we have is uh, zero, or let us write this thing in. more recognizable form so 
now we can see that uh, 0 is equal to gm by c gd and pole is 1 by rd cgd plus cdb right so we already know how to do the Bourdieu plot of this kind of transfer function which is already factorized and in standard form so let us try to make a Bourdieu plot for this transfer function and see that what type of response do we get so this will clearly vary with frequency because now frequency term exists in the expression. So first we will do the magnitude plot. So for magnitude plot, uh, we find that uh, we will have to add three curves, one for constant, second for zero, third for pole. Right. And uh, this omega z and omega p, uh, their location will decide the overall frequency response. So one will have to uh, ask which of them is larger and which of them is uh, greater smaller because uh, we know that uh, pole introduces uh, downward slope of minus 20 db zero introduces upward slope of uh, plus 20 db per decade so the overall response is going to be decided by their location right but here uh, we can see that uh, this is zero this is pole and this can be rewritten like this uh, 1 by gm into cgd here yeah. so we see that both have two factors registers capacitor register capacitor right and uh, in this case uh, typically this rd is going to be larger than 1 by gm so this is one factor. Second is you can see that the uh, there are two capacitors in the denominator of pool and only one capacitor in the denominator of zero, CGD. So in addition to CGD, we have CDB also. So again, the denominator of uh, omega p in terms of capacitor is greater than that of uh, the capacitive term in zero. Right. So this. Uh, points that uh, we can take this as the case omega pole less than omega z so pole is smaller than uh, zero in this case so now when we do the uh, plot magnitude plot we can put omega p here and omega z somewhere here. So this is going to be uh, most likely the scenario. Now we have three terms, uh, the constant term and uh, zero and pole. Zero and pole both are not located at origin. So we have to plot uh, each of those curves individually. So constant term is going to give rise uh, response like this put a plot like this which will be 20 log gm rd pole is going to give rise a response which will be zero up till omega p and then we will have a line with slope minus 20 db per decade 
and zero will give rise a curve which will be zero up till omega z and then a curve with slope plus 20 db per decade so these are the three curves and we will have to add these three to get the overall response. So what we find is that uh, up till omega p starting from omega is equal to zero or in log term from minus infinity, <clears throat> the overall curve is going to be decided by this uh, constant term. So we will have this kind of response up till omega p because uh, these two, they are zero. Now, after omega p, this value will start decreasing with a rate of uh, minus 20 dB per decade. Right? So it will start decreasing. Per decade and this will continue up till location of omega z and then after this uh, these two slopes they will cancel out and the curve will become horizontal right so this is going to be the overall body plot So we see that uh, gain is high only up to omega p. And then it starts reducing and uh, it uh, becomes a small. And it becomes a certain constant value after omega z. So here I have shown it to be equal to zero, but this uh, need not be at uh, zero level. This horizontal part, final horizontal part, uh, could be at certain level decided by the separation between omega j and omega p. Right. For example, if omega j is uh, very far off, then uh, this might become less than one also. This curve might be like this. So uh, this portion is uh, need not to be identified always uh, with this zero level. So this is the magnitude response. Now let us see what will be the phase response for uh, this circuit or this amplifier. So AV is uh, minus GMRD into one minus G omega by omega Z divided by one plus G omega by omega P. So when we do the phase plot, this is going to be the phase plot of gm minus gmrd plus phase plot of 1 minus g omega by omega z minus phase plot of 1 plus g omega omega p so these three phase plots we will have to add so actual phase plot here is going to be a minus by uh, sorry you can take this with minus pi and then minus tan inverse omega by omega j minus tan inverse omega by omega p. 
So we are going to plot each of these three ones. <clears throat> So here we have degree on y axis and uh, this is 180 degree. So what we find here is that for the constant, uh, this is going to be the phase plot for the constant term. And uh, for the second one, we know that uh, it will start from 0, go to minus pi by 2. And uh, similarly for the pole also. But we have already uh, found that omega p is going to be smaller than uh, omega z. So this is going to be the relative location. And for phage plot, we know that uh, effect of phage is uh, visible from one tenth of frequency to ten times of frequency. Here, like this. So we will have to mark these two additional frequencies as well. Right. So for the pole, uh, response is going to be zero. And then say this is 90 degree minus 90 degree. So this will be 0 up till omega p by 10 and then uh, minus 90 degree from 10 omega p. And in between there will be a straight line like this. Uh, similarly for uh, 0 also we will have a curve like this. 0 up till omega z by 10 and then at minus 90 degree after 10 omega z and then there will be straight line like this. So what we will get now is uh, sum of all these three. So the overall response is uh, going to be minus 180 degree up till omega p by 10 and uh, then it will have a slope and this slope is uh, a minus 45 degree per decade. So when frequency changes by 10 times, the angle reduces by 45 degree. So we have this slope up till omega p and then uh, flat region up till omega z by 10 and then further decay and here so this point is minus 270 degree and this point is going to be minus 360 degree so this is the overall frequency phase response of the common source amplifier. Right. So here we see that uh, we have usual phase of uh, minus 180 degree. And in the same region we had gain of uh, GMRD. So this uh, behaves like the usual low frequency uh, when frequency is less than omega p by 10. And after that its response starts deviating away from the uh, what we discussed uh, earlier, low frequency case. Right. So this is uh, for the simplest uh, circuit that means the core of the common source amplifier, that means this one, right? Now, uh, when it is going to be used in real life, there will be uh, other components also, uh, biasing resistors, uh, coupling capacitors. So we can now see the complete circuit that will be actually used in uh, 
or real life So this will be the typical uh, scenario when common source amplifier is uh, used in real life. So this is an external capacitor, which we did not include in the uh, previous analysis. Why? Because this uh, CB that we are going to use here, it will be very large compared with uh, uh, CGS, CGD or CDB or CSB compared with all these four. Right. This will be typically of order of uh, microfarad, but these will be typically of order of nanofarad to picofarad. So they will be very small, and that is why the impedance offered by these will be very small compared with the impedance offered by the capacitors, which are inside MOS. So that is why at high frequency, this capacitor is going to act like a short circuit. So in the high frequency, these capacitors, uh, they play uh, no role. We will return to their role uh, when we discuss the low frequency response. But I just wanted to show that this is a complete circuit. And uh, you can now guess that if we try to use this uh, high frequency model of MOS with all those capacitors, four capacitors, then analysis is going to be very difficult. And that is why what we did was we uh, took only the uh, core of the CS amplifier for the high frequency response analysis. So now we are going to add one more element just to uh, give an idea that how complicated things becomes very quickly. We are now going to include this part also. That means this uh, source register and uh, the capacitor. But as I pointed out, this capacitor this will uh, get shorted at high frequency. So uh, the circuit that we are going to uh, consider for analysis is going to be this one. Yeah. So the additional element that you can see now we have added is this RS. And this part we have already analyzed. So we now want to see that uh, what will be the transfer function for this and then possibly the frequency response, that means body plot. So this is the only additional element that we are now going to encounter. But we will see that this will uh, drastically complicate the analysis. So we first have to, of course, draw the model high frequency and uh, small signal model for the above circuit and uh, we will consider lambda is equal to zero and bulk grounded So bulk is grounded, that means our CDB, this will be in parallel with RD and this is our VO. Source will be grounded, only the CGS, CGD and DB, they will be present. Now we will have this additional term RS also. And now we want to know what is transfer function VO with respect to this VS. So this is what we want to analyze. Right. So now you can see that uh, 
there will be now you have to find out this voltage vg because vgs uh, is no longer equal to vi which was the case in the previous case because vi was earlier directly connected at the gate but now we have intervening resistor so this is going to make this situation a little bit more complicated so we uh, now have to apply kcl at gate also So let us first uh, apply KCL at drain as usual. So we have this uh, output current splitting into two currents, IG and ID. So this uh, is minus VO by ZL is equal to GMVGS plus this VO minus Vg divided by x c g d. Right. So from here we can uh, find out uh, what will be Vg because Vg is unknown. Vs is uh, anyway ground. So now you can see that for degenerate case, situation will be even more difficult. So if we separate out VG on one side, this is what you will get. J omega C GD minus GM equal to J omega CGD plus CDB plus 1 by RD into V. Now we need to know what is gate voltage. So for that, uh, we will have to write KCL at gate. So here this is input current and this is IS and uh, this you can call ID or maybe you can take the direction like this. So here we can write KCL at gate. So that will give rise to V S minus VG divided by RS plus VO minus VG divided by XC GD equal to VG divided by XC GS. So from here one can find out uh, uh, G separate out uh, VG. So if we do this, this is what we are going to get VS by RS plus G omega C GDVO is equal to 1 by RS plus G omega C GS plus G omega C GD into VG. So here we have uh, equation 1, VG on the left side. Here we have equation 2, VG on the right hand side. So we can do 1 into 2. This will eliminate Vg. And uh, if you do this and a series of manipulations, what we will get is Vo by Vs is equal to 
जे ओमेगा सी जी डी माइनस जी एम आर डी डिवाइडेड बाई लेंदी डिनोमिनेटर विच विल बी ए जे ओमेगा स्क्वायर प्लस बी जे ओमेगा प्लस वन सो दे आर टू कोफिशियंट ए एंड बी and these coefficients they are going to be lengthy say a is equal to will be equal to rd rs into cgd c gs plus cgd cdb plus cgs cdb so this is going to be coefficient a and coefficient b is going to be 1 plus gm rd C G D R S plus R S C G S plus R D C D B plus C G D. So this is uh, coefficient B. So now what we find here is that we, when we introduced R S, we found that the denominator has become second order. This is no longer a first order. Uh, numerator fortunately continues to remain first order and the constant term you can see will be same minus gmrd you can take this gm common right so numerator scenario remains uh, favorable only this denominator things it gets a uh, change now more challenging so one will have to factorize this right so denominator has to be factorized A G omega square plus B G omega plus one. This has to be factorized, and uh, after factorization, one can get a term like this: omega p one plus one, and G omega by omega p two plus one. So there will be two poles. So we know that each introduces minus twenty dB. Uh, downward slope so overall uh, there will be uh, their contribution can become up to minus 40 db uh, per decade so that means uh, going down at very fast rate so here a is going to be omega p1 omega p2 and b is going to be 1 by omega p1 plus omega p2 right so in general when we will have to factorize this but uh, here it is if we have this kind of scenario say omega p1 here and omega p2 here and suppose this gap is large actually this turns out to be the case for this cs uh, amplifier so if this is the case that means what we have is omega p2 is that's much greater than omega p1 so this implies 1 by omega p2 is going to be much much less than omega p1 so what will be consequence of this now you can see that this b which is uh, sum of reciprocal of two poles gets approximated to only omega p1 so this implies b coefficients can be approximated to omega p1 and since a is 1 by omega of p1 omega of p2 so this becomes uh, b by omega p2 right so what it says is that the first pole is going to be approximately 1 by b and the second pole is going to be b by a so once you have found out the denominator and if the situation turns out to be like this right and this scenario is called uh, dominant pole is so that means one of the poles is significantly smaller compared with the rest of the poles so here we have only two poles but there could be multiple pole scenario also where uh, the smallest one is uh, 
quite far away, quite below or quite at a lower value compared with the all other poles. So if that is the case, then finding out pole uh, becomes easier. And as I pointed out, for this case, it is valid also. And uh, here, if we have this scenario, then one can uh, do the magnitude plot of this uh, uh, transfer function quite easily. And in this case, uh, this zero is going to be even larger compared with the uh, pool. This zero uh, is going to be decided by this capacitor and GM. So zero will be actually in this case, uh, omega Z is going to be significantly greater than even omega P2 because the denominator uh, Omega Z is here. You can see is uh, this thing GM by C G D. So this is going to be quite large because uh, Omega Z is one by GM, which is going to be a small number, and C G D, which is also going to be small number but uh, uh, these coefficients value a and b they are not going to be so small because you can have rd rs and all the capacitors are present here right so uh, that is why the omega p and omega p2 they are going to be smaller than omega j But of course, one can choose uh, register and those values so that this uh, condition gets violated. So what we are talking about is this scenario. Omega P1 is smaller than Omega P2, smaller than Omega J. Right. So we have Omega P1, Omega P2, and Omega J. So now you can uh, do the quick body plot. So it will have a constant value. And this will turn out to be same as what we uh, were getting earlier. Minus 20, minus 40, and then minus 20. So we see that the overall response remains same. That means uh, gain will start decaying after a certain point. And the uh, exact nature will, of course, be decided by how many components we have included in the model.